Hello and welcome to this Business Central video. Today I want to talk about posting groups in Business Central. So this is another video in the series I've been doing on making the most of your Business Central trial. And so far we've gone through things like setting up the trial, assigning licenses, uh, how to access Business Central, setting up email. Um, but if you really want to get into Business Central, there's a few key concepts that are really useful if you're going to be playing around with the trial and trying to see how it all works. And one of the really important ones is posting groups. So what are posting groups in Business Central? So posting groups are the method that Business Central uses to select the GL codes um, when you're posting transactions. So when I post a sales invoice for a certain item, that's going to have that's going to need to post to my sales or to control my accounts receivable. It's going to need to post to an income code. It's going to need to know whether to post VAT without the user doing anything. The user just wants to be able to pick up the customer, pick up the items and click post and everything else happens in the background. <clears throat> and Business Central's mechanism for all, all this to work is, is through posting groups. And it's absolutely fantastic the way it works. It's really flexible. Um, and it, it really is a really neat feature of, uh, of uh, Business Central. So the different types, there are different types of posting groups. There's things called specific posting groups, then there's general posting groups, and there's VAT posting groups. So the easiest one to get to grips with is, is a specific posting group. And we're gonna, we're gonna assign them to our customers, to our vendors, to our bank accounts, to our fixed assets and things like that our master data basically and that is going to uh, and if, if we take the customer as our example um, the, the specific customer group that uh, the specific posting group for a customer is a, the customer posting group and that holds things that holds things like the accounts receivable code the the sales ledger control account next we've got general posting groups and we assign them um, to our customers and to our vendors um, but we also, they're used in combination with a general product posting group, which we assign to our items, if we're using items, and to our GL codes, if we're using just posting directly to GL codes. <clears throat> and what it does there is if it uses the general business posting group from the customer, for example, with in combination with the general product posting group on the item to know which revenue code to post to, to which income code, uh, sorry, to which discounts codes, which cost of goods sold codes, um, and all this, and all a whole host of other income statement codes. So the best way to show this is in the system. So if I just nip into Business Central, and sometimes it's best to start at the end. So if I go into a sales order, <clears throat> and if I just pick up this sales order here, and you can see here that this is for a datum, it's for this item, um, for this amount, £649. And when I click post, which I'm just going to do a preview, this system goes ahead and everything works. And as we can see here on RGL, it's gone, right, okay, this is my debtors uh, accounts. I'm going to post this something to this VAT. This is my stock code, uh, cost of goods sold, and my revenue account. And it's done all that in the background. So it did that by, by the combination of posting groups that are assigned to this customer, that are assigned to this item. So let's dig into that. So if you're going to have a look at a datum, that has got the customer posting group on there. And that's how Business Central knew how where to post the accounts receivable to there. So if I scroll down, you can see here, it's got domestic assigned to it. And if I click the drop down and go select from this list, you can see here that the receivables account was set there. So that's why when I posted that sales order and created the invoice, it, it knew to debit this code. Now, going to our, there's the same on the vendor called the vendor posting group. And on there, you will put your accounts payable code. So if you're starting to think about your own chart of accounts, you think, right, okay, do I need more than one uh, customer posting group? Have I got more than one debtors code? Um, and things like that. So you can kind of match it and think about how your system might work. Next, the system um, has to know which revenue account to use. So on our item, we've created our item. We have we have put on there 
uh, a product, a general product posting group. And on our customer here, you can see that I've got a general business posting group. Now they don't actually hold GL codes in their own right. The system is going to use the combination. And to show you that, it's probably easy using this screenshot. So what the system does is it takes the general business posting group from the customer, in this case, domestic. It takes the general product posting group from the item, from this Athens desk, and then it gets the combination of those two domestic and retail. And in my general posting setup, we've hit this line and it goes, right, okay, if I'm selling this, then I need to use this sales code. If I have any discount, I need to use this discount code. Now, what's absolutely fantastic about this, the way this is working is, if I would, if a day, if I had another customer, say in the, uh, say in the EU, then I could assign a general business posting group of EU here. I wouldn't have to change the item because when I picked up the customer, it'd pick up EU. The item is still retail, but I'd, instead of hitting this line here, I'd then hit EU retail. So I'd be on this line, this line here now. So I would go, right, okay, I want to use this sales code. It just so happens that they're the same, but I could have a code, a sales code called sales to EU. Uh, and it would use this sales account, uh, this discount account. And we could have a whole host of different GL accounts. So if your, if your income statement has different sales accounts, then you can build this, um, your product posting groups and your general posting setup to accommodate that. So if I just press escape that and drag that off. So that's how the system then selected the, um, the revenue codes. And I'll just very quickly show you. So that if we go into items, so the general a business posting group was on the customer. And then here we can see the general product posting group here. No GL codes are held on either the customer or the item. It's all done via posting groups. So the final piece of the jigsaw for our invoice was the VAT. And it uses exactly the same method as the general business posting group and the general product posting group to get the revenue code. It uses a, it uses a, a VAT business posting group, which I assigned to my customer and a VAT product posting group, which I assigned to my item. And then it goes into, so if I have a look at my item and we just, we know, uh, just, I didn't make a note of that, uh, the VAT product posting group on the Athens, um, which is standard. So it goes domestic standard. And instead of using the general posting setup, now we use the VAT posting setup. And we've gone domestic and standard. So if I maximize this, and if we, we've hit this line here, so the system knows, right, okay, the customer is domestic, the product is standard, therefore I'm gonna charge 20% VAT and it's gonna hit this GL code. And now you can see the absolutely fantastic thing about this is if my customer had a was a European customer, then I'd hit this line, instead of hitting this line here, I would have set EU against the customer. So now I'd be on this line here. So customer has got EU assigned to it. I don't have to change the item at all. Never have to change it. That stays as standard. But now I've hit this line. This combination says, right, okay, it's 20% back, but this time it's reverse charge. So it knows to, to deal with that differently. And if, it, and if the customer had export, then I'd hit further down here uh, and it would be zero and hit the and hit this geo code and just be normal that so that is how it's done the vat and then we also had some inventory because it had to reduce our inventory and uh, credit inventory and, and debit our cost of goods sold now how did it do that on the item go back to the item on the item, we have an inventory posting group called resale. So the system now actually does a very similar thing. It uses a combination 
of the location we were selling from, which was this case was Maine. I'll go back to the, the sales order and show you in a second. And then it goes and then it takes the inventory posting group from the item and it uses the inventory posting setup. So we've hit this line here. So it knows to use this inventory account here with the 64140. And again, what's absolutely fantastic about this is if I have different locations, say I might have a location, a consignment location, I want to track that on my balance sheet in a different GL code. Then when I use that location, um, if I had another location down here, uh, say they actually all use the same, but let's just say I had a consignment location here, then I'd have the combination of consignment and then the item I never have to change, that'd be retail, and that might hit a totally different GL code. So I get full control and flexibility by just the combination that I'm using. So this, if we just now go and post that sales order again, now we know all this information about the specific posting group that was used, the customer posting group, that was our debit for our accounts receivable. It then used the, gem, the combination of general business and general product to work out the the uh, income code, you use the, the the VAT business and the VAT product to work out the VAT, and then it and then it used the inventory posting groups and all that information. Once it's set up, we go back to our sales order. So we've got a datum and this item preview post. And there's all our entries. There's the debit to this, the VAT. If I just scroll across so we can just see the amounts. Um, our income code and our, and our uh, inventory. So everything all comes together. So I'm hoping that that gives an idea and an understanding of how posting groups work and really get you and can also get you thinking about how your own chart of accounts can fit into Business Central. Always bearing in mind that dimensions can also help to. Instead of having lots of sales codes, you can also crush them down using the dimension, which is an entirely different subject, which I do have a few videos on the, on the channel as well about that, if you wanted to look at that. So that concludes the video on posting groups. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope it's brought a bit more understanding to how Business Central is all fitting together in that area. Um, I hope to make another video now on configuring my own company and going through the steps that I can use. So I'll see you next time. Thanks.